In the Soviet Union, the uh, all the breweries were nationalized. So there were there were six recipes that were written in Moscow, and the breweries basically brewed them in rotation. So for a commercial brewery, it made absolutely no difference if you made good or totally undrinkable beer because the customers never knew which brewery had made it anyway. And the government owned the brewery. So even if you were successful, it mattered nothing to you. So this meant that commercial beer at this time was, was really poor. But the farmers, they knew how to malt, they knew how to brew, and they were growing grain in North Lithuania. They had absolutely everything they needed to brew. So they did. And in fact, uh, Northern Lithuania became this kind of hotspot for getting illegal but good beer. So people traveled from Latvia into Lithuania to um, to buy beers for weddings and so on. And then, of course, the, the Soviet Union fell apart and you got this almost explosion because you have all these farmers in North Lithuania who almost have businesses already, like we saw with uh, with uh, Algimantas from Uvalda. And so basically what they do is they just get a government stamp of approval for the business that they already have. And within a few years, there's literally hundreds of breweries in North Lithuania brewing farmhouse ale in uh, wooden vessels. And the government doesn't actually like this. So one thing that they do is uh, they enact a law that says it's illegal to brew in wood. But the Lithuanians basically have spent these 20 years in isolation coming up with their own ideas about what beer should be, basically. 